Sometimes when you have to test a whole bunch of cables, like way more than even this, when you have things like RJ connectors, you can plug those into dedicated testers. But then when you have other stuff, it'd be nice to have a more generic testing interface. And another maker recently had a project doing something just like this. So under his suggestion, I stole his design files and came up with this version of that tester, which I made with today's sponsor, PCBWay. So I have a few breakout boards for different connectors here. RJ45, RJ12 telephone, and just tip ring sleeve audio phone cables. And in my version of the tester, I wanted to try to automate the test so we don't have to stare at all those LEDs, especially if 40 are being used, and try to keep track of pass or fail. The schematic of the tester doesn't fit on a regular sheet of paper, so this is scaled down. It may be hard to see, but basically it's an Arduino Nano with a rotary encoder and the push button on the encoder. I squared C pins and power pins going to an OLED display header, two 40 pin headers. One is going to be output generating test signals and the other one's going to be for inputs where a cable is going to connect from here over to here so we can send a test signal out and through the cable we can see if we can read that signal back in where we expect or if it's missing we have an open circuit or if that signal shows up elsewhere we know we have maybe a short circuit in the cable or and the cable may be miswired maybe it's a crossover cable so the pins are going somewhere else than expected. And so using a nano with only so many pins, we have 40 outputs and 40 more inputs. So I'm using I squared C to go to five 16 channel GPIO expanders, MCP 23017. So 40 of these are going to the output header. The other 40 are going to the input. And we write software for specific cables going on specific pins have menu options in the OLED display, use the rotary encoder to scroll back and forth and choose a test, click the button on the encoder and run the test and get the results. When powered up, it says rotate for options. So I have it hard coded. There is a tip sleeve test. So a mono phone cable can be tested by plugging in one of these jacks using the headers on the output and the input header. Then we can see if there's continuity from header to header. Same with an ethernet cable or a telephone cable. We can test RJ45, so it's set to look for eight pins continuity, or RJ12, it's only gonna look for two pins. So on this phone breakout board, that would be the two middle pins out of the six. So I have it set up in the sketch so that I can plug these headers in right up at the top and so it would be like this which happens to be pin 40 down to 35 on this outside row and when i plug it in on the other side it's this outside row and it's pins one through six so when it's in rj12 test mode if i connect these dupont jumpers to simulate the telephone tip and ring going to the pins they're expected at. Then I run the test. It passes. And if I unplug one of these wires, run it again. Now it's detecting failure on pin four. So this is the wire I took out. And this is the fourth pin on this header. So the errors are related to the output header side. Pin four on the output is actually being read on 30 something over here. So it's gonna tell me four, not 30 something. I can also have a short circuit, but one thing is I've been having trouble with this project. I'm using 75 or 76% of the program space in the Nano, and I think 64% of working memory. And I have a feeling I might be actually running out of memory by having some variables get created and then destroyed as functions are called maybe. So I might be corrupting memory. Sometimes this reboots. So I wasn't able to get the OLED to show me short circuit failures, but I will see those in the serial monitor. So moving on to another test, 
if I click to exit and go to the RJ45, and out of the eight RJ45 pins, I'm only going to plug in four. So the connector that would be over here pins one through eight, and when it's over here, pins one through eight will start somewhere down here. That should be where it maps. Now, with only four pins, one through four, hooked up, if I run the test, it's telling me there's a fail open circuit on five, six, seven, and eight, and it will cycle through reporting this until I click to exit. Now, if I were to cross over pins three and four and run this again, Now, three, four, five, six, seven, eight are being detected as an open failure. It's actually miswired, but it says open because it's looking for it in a certain spot and it can't find it. So that means only pins one and two are correctly wired, which is true. And because pin three and four are going somewhere they shouldn't, technically that could either be a short circuit or a miswired connector. So, in the serial monitor, we can see pins 3 and 4 are showing up as that kind of fault. So now, if we switch over to testing real cables, starting with RJ45, plugging the header in where software knows to look for the pins, I have this small Ethernet patch cable. So first, without plugging it in, I'll test and it's going to say all eight pins are failing open. Plug this in, run the test. Now it passed because all the correct pins are in the correct positions. So now if I take that away, now if I take these telephone breakout boards, plug them in where software has been told to look for those pins. First, I have this telephone cable here. If I go into RJ12 test mode and it passed, if I unplug one just to see pins three and four, which are the tip and ring, fail. But also, here's another phone cable. When I test this phone cable, It's failing open on the tip and ring. And because those pins are present, but they're just going somewhere not expected, those two pins will actually show up as a short or miswire problem in the serial monitor. And the reason for that, looking at the connectors lined up the same way, these are wired opposite from each other. The original cable, if we line it up the same way, so this is wired directly one-to-one, -one, but we can test for that if we actually need the cables to be set up a certain way and we don't want to have to get a magnifier and try to see this up close on every cable if we have to get through a bunch. So now if we take those away, we can switch over to these quarter-inch tip ring audio connectors, plug those in where software is set up to look for them. So I have this audio patch cable now. Get out of that old test. Go to quarter tip sleeve. If I don't plug it in, of course, it should fail. When I plug it in, run it, it passes. And going back to making it fail, I can just take all of this out of the way. When I run this test, it's only looking for tip and sleeve, but it's reporting an open circuit on pins one, two, and three. And that's because in order to make the test work, it's a stereo jack, so it really is looking for three pins, but we only have two. So here, the sleeve is shorted to the ring, and that will be detected as a short circuit failure. So I had to write the test to actually accept sleeve shorting to ring as valid when this is being tested. If I wanted to test actual three pin stereo, I would just make a new test function and instead of tip sleeve, I would call it TRS for tip sleeve ring. 
So, of course, we have 40 pins to work with. We can probably set this up in various other ways to do all kinds of other tests where we need to check continuity from end to end, or just generate some test signals and be able to read in inputs. This could be a platform for a, some sort of a test bed. So that's why I just thought it was an interesting concept from another maker, and I wanted to expand upon it. But, as I mentioned, there are some problems. I don't know what it is where this crashes with the Nano. And also I wonder, I don't know if this is too small of a display. So I think maybe I'll consider if I want to redesign an iteration not using a Nano, maybe some sort of a more modern ESP32. And then we could even have Wi-Fi access with this. There's a lot of options here, but this is my take on another maker's mega tester.